2011 was an interesting year for movies. We met both Captain America and Thor for the first time. The best Fast and Furious movie came out. Harry Potter ended. And one of the most underrated movies came out that year, The Girl with the Dragon Tattoo. In this video, we're going to be talking about the US version starring Daniel Craig and Rooney Mara. We're not talking about the original Swedish version starring Numi Rapace, although that movie and movie series is really awesome and I highly recommend checking it out. This one we're just focusing on the US reboot. Also, this is part of Cinematic Late, the series where I talk about movies and TV shows that may have missed for whatever reason. Of course, I have clearly seen this movie plenty of times. Uh, and I'm just really excited to talk about it because I've never really made a video about it. Anyway, back to the movie. So we're, of course, talking about the U.S. version, which was just a single movie, just the original book based by Steve Larson, uh, who made the Girl with the Dragon Tattoo book series. Um, this one was just the first movie of that franchise. It never really got further from here, at least in terms of the U.S. version. But it was pretty well received, if you ask me, getting both a 7.8 out of 10 on IMDb as well as an 87% critic and 86% audience score on Rotten Tomatoes. So it did fare pretty well for the most part. So why it didn't do better, doesn't get more acclaim, kind of doesn't make sense to me. Now this movie is by no means easy to watch, or it definitely tackles some difficult subject matter, and there are those difficult scenes, but it's a really good detective story full of twists and turns, and I've always just enjoyed it and recommending it to people to watch, especially if you're interested in a crime thriller. The story is that of a discredited journalist who is hired by a mega-rich industrialist to solve a 40-year-old mystery. There's also the story of Lizbeth Slander, who is the girl with the dragon tattoo. Oh, that's the title of the movie! And although the stories do seem very disconnected, eventually they do converge, but it does take a while to get there. The lead characters of Daniel Craig and Rooney Mara are great. Craig was on the rise from being in the new James Bond and tried to separate himself from that persona of this role. And to be honest, he is just mainly Daniel Craig in this, but it still works for me. Then there's Rooney Mara, who was not so well known, but did play in the reboot of Nightmare on Elm Street just before this movie and did a really good job as Lizbeth Slander and way outdid herself as the troubled, cold, and calculated character. Also, this movie was directed by David Fincher, one of my favorite directors, who has made Seven, Zodiac, Fight Club, Gone Girl, Panic Room, Curious Case of Benjamin Button, and basically anything that's dark and likes to fuck with your head. Oh, and also The Social Network. Well, yeah, I guess that one checks out too. This movie is one of Fincher's best in my opinion. It does closely resemble the book, as does the original Swedish version, and even nods to the sequel, The Girl Who Plays With Fire, towards the end but it never got one. And the reason I don't think it did is that American audiences probably thought it was a little bit too graphic, a little bit too violent, a little bit too heavy in specific subject matters to deal with, that they just didn't really attach themselves to it with it, or just felt like no, the connection was being made. But in international audiences, I felt like it was kind of the opposite where they were more nitpicking on the fact that there was a lack of Swedish accents and actors, despite Stellan Skarsgård being in the film who is Swedish himself. But this movie, despite its dark tone, is extremely engaging for me as I follow these characters trying to solve this mystery. It is gritty and the entire film is cold, not only in the setting, but in the feel. I just love it and always recommend it for anyone who enjoys a crime thriller. I try not to give away too much about the movie in this video. Um, I think it's more about the journey and the things you learn along the way if you haven't seen it. I highly recommend checking it out. There's just so many twists and turns. It's a real, I shouldn't say it's fun, because some of the subject matter isn't fun, but it's an interesting adventure that evolves a very unique way that a lot of times you just don't see coming, but it's totally worth watching, totally worth checking out. I highly recommend it if you haven't seen it, but if you have seen it, let me know what your thoughts and opinions are on it down in the comment section down below. What do you think it is compared to the original novelization version, as well as to the original Swedish version starring Numi Rapace? Do you feel like that one's better? If you feel like this one's better, let me know your thoughts and opinions down in the comments. Also, while you're down there, be sure to hit like, subscribe, and ring the bell notification so you don't miss out on any future videos. You don't want to miss out because I'm going to be doing a very lengthy and heavy project of revisiting the MCU, each movie, one by one, upcoming. So you can look forward to plenty of Marvel content coming up on that. If you don't want to miss out on any of those videos, again, hit subscribe and ring the bell notification. But other than that, that's all I have for now. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really do appreciate it, and I hope to see you in the next video.